Sar, what Sar, this is what Sargent did. You know, Sargent, when, he, when people describe the way he painted, it's way more about getting the color right and thinking about your color and then executing. In other words, he would, this is just me remembering the letter that somebody wrote and they're describing Sargent painting their sister or, or mother or something. And they say he, he would sit there with his brush and he would mix up his color and then he would run up to the model and he would hold the brush up and then he would come back and he would play with the color some more. And then he, and he would sit there and do this for, you know, 10 minutes and then he'd run up to the canvas and he would, okay, got that, done. Now, how much time did he spend painting? About three seconds. How much time did he spend thinking about what he wanted to stroke there? Now, I'm not saying, I mean, there were times when he was probably just going, right? But I'm saying that that's what it's all about. It's about thinking about what you're going to do before you do it and having an understanding. You know, the fact that it's all, you know, goofy now, the fact that this has got more, goes in more than this one does, and they look different on either side. When I start to paint, just bumping the paint here and there a little bit, it's going to change all that so much that I don't worry about details like that but I do make sure that my big picture is right. On the one hand, you should be very, uh, you should mix all your colors and all your steps, okay? You should mix the darkest color and you should mix in steps all the way up like I'm gonna show you how to do. Um, you should do that and, and you shouldn't skip steps. But what's not important is your steps don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get every little color. You don't have to get every little nuance. You just got to get the general basic colors. We're just preparing a palette, which we're going to paint with. But once we start painting, we're going to play with that palette and change colors and do all kinds of stuff. And it's way easier to do that later when we're painting than it is to worry about all those individual little nuances now. You'll forget where they go. Now, from now on, I'm not going to think like that. I'm going to think differently. I'm going to think, I only care about steps now. I don't care about that va or that table. I don't care about what colors are over there. I don't care about anything until I first get my step. Okay? So in other words, I'm not going to say, what do I need next over there? Forget it. You don't ever think that way. You just get your next step, which is going to be uh, some blue. What happens is, is that people start to, to and if the color is really wrong, it's easy to see it. It's like, oh, whoa, mine's too red, you know, or, oh, mine's too dark or light or whatever it is. It's really easy to see the big differences. And then as you start to bump it and you start to get close and your color's really close, you can always see a difference. You know, you'll sit there and you'll say, ah, I don't know. It's just mine's the slightest bit more, ah, I don't know. There's just something different on that. You got it. You're thinking too hard. <laughs> That's because our brains are so sensitive to the color. Okay, so what I do is I'm gonna, if I hold this out, yeah, it's always gonna be, yeah, more, more than I would do. But also, as you start to paint, you're gonna mess your drawing up a little bit. You're gonna bump things and goof up your corner and all that. And just don't worry too much about that. Kind of keep things where they should be, more or less. Don't worry too much about it. Just get your canvas covered. And then once it's covered, it's gonna be a cinch believe it or not, to just bump your, you fix your lines here and there. And if your cylinder is a little wonky, you can bump it a little bit here and a little bit there. But you may not need to do very much, as opposed to sitting there worrying about it the whole time and trying to keep it perfect the whole time. Just get your canvas covered get your val and check your values. And is that, you know, so that's where you're going to be. When you start to fill it in, you don't have to understand it. The only thing you have to understand is, did I check the color? Did I measure my proportion? You know. Oh, my, my, that line, my book looks funny. It doesn't look like it's, the perspective is right. It looks goofy. Okay, we'll check the angle. You guys know how to check an angle with one of these? You just hold it out. This one's vertical, and this one checks the angle, right? This one's vertical, and this one, you got a book sitting on a table. I want to know what that angle is. Come over here, draw it in, check it. So there's nothing about what you're doing that you can't go and check and find out, you know? And I always, I'm over painting a little bit, you know, in other words, it's really just a sliver of a line on the edge, but I'm painting it a little fatter 
You know, I've got this big brush in my hand and I'm painting it a little fatter than normal. Um, but uh, when I go and put the next step in, I'm gonna push it back and make it thin again. Is everybody with me? And I do that always. Whenever I paint a shadow area in, I kind of overpaint it just slightly and then bump it back with the next color. <clears throat> so in other words, when you look at me painting this, it's not, I'm not, this edge is not as fat, nearly as fat as I'm painting it. Here, here's the thing, is, is there, there's a, this, this is transitions right here from this dark to this much lighter color, and it's a very smooth gradation, you know? And so when I hold out this color checker with this color on there, it looks like it doesn't exist anywhere, right? I mean, it, that's, that's the, the sense that you get when you hold it out. You think, well, it's, it doesn't go anywhere. But what you do is you hold it in a position where the left half of the color checker color is too light and the right half is too dark, got me? And then you know that right in the middle it's got to be right. But it's, the transition is happening so quick that your eye doesn't see it. Your eye sees a solid line and it doesn't ever see that. It's just in a spot. But mentally I'm saying to myself, the left half is too light. The right half is too dark, talking about my paint. So I know that it's got to be right in the middle. Okay, now everybody take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. The magic of painting is that you can get away with so much, but what you can't get away with is if you mess up your values, especially like your shadows. You know, if you, if it, now that's a huge thing. See, it's getting your splotches I mean, you know, it's what Sargent did. <clears throat> I don't want to do too much of this looking at his paintings, but I mean, if you actually look at, you know, anything about this, I mean, even if you look at, uh, uh, this is an extreme example, you know, and you can't, see, you have to see this from a, a long, it's a teeny little painting. I mean, it's like this big, and, but if you get far enough away, this, you know, but this is just nothing but slop, you know. But his values were right. Now, let's look at what I've done so far. And I want you to think about if you guys are painting and you had painted exactly what I'd painted so far, it doesn't look too special, does it? Right? It just looks like just dip, just filling in shapes. They're not straight, they're crooked, they're not right, whatever but I'm right on target. I'm doing everything so far is perfect. So the same thing when you guys start to paint. When you start to fill in your shadows and everything, it's not going to look right. Okay? But it's great to lose your line. Sargent loses his line all the time. It's like the mark of great art or something. It's that subtlety thing. You know, you feel like you have to... An amateur artist feels like they have to define everything. They overdefine shadows, they overdefine pattern, they overdefine everything. And you don't need to, you know. That's why people can't paint hands, because they overdefine the big dark lines between every finger when it's actually just pink, you know, or something. So normally you would sort of build it up all together? Is that how you would work? In other words, see, see one, of the, one of the issues and, and one of the things with when you're doing the draw, mix, paint, you know, method or whatever directly is, is that we, a lot of artists, what they do is they build it up all together. You know, you, you start, and that's the whole thing with doing layers even, you know, you, 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 you kind of get your thing, you build up your shadow a little bit, you work a little highlight in, and you kind of work it all together so you kind of have a sense of what, what's going on the whole time, you know what I mean? Like you don't get ahead of yourself. And, but this is like, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. You know, this is, the, this is the finished painting. I mean, I may never touch this area again. And it's done, but it's, now it looks totally out of place because none of the rest, there's nothing else to look at with. So, but the, the, the crazy thing is, and this is like going back to why I think, you know, um, trying to be very objective. I think that this is a great way to learn to see like an artist because this looks, actually looks right to, like I don't see, when I look at this, I look over there and I see that pot and I look here and I say, yeah, that looks right. 
Now, that's, that's a trained eye. That's just from doing it for years and years and years. But every one of you will get that very same thing. I mean, I've had, you know, many, many, many students who've done this, and it's the same deal. You start to get to get it, you know, and your mind gets it, and you're seen through the optical illusion. I'm trying to decide if I want to put a little streak of color. See, right now, this is, this is advanced DMP. <laughs> but I've got this little black line running under here right and that black line is, is just burn umber and ultramarine and if I come in with this next color which is see how it kind of goes into a little bit of a highlight there on the bottom if I take that and that mixes with the black it's going to create this kind of ugly gray that doesn't really belong and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a trace of one of these more brownish colors like maybe this one and just and it's going to end up being way too thick but then when I put in the highlight, I'm going to push it back down to just nothing. But having just that little thin trace line of that different color makes it feel like pottery and not like it's, it's weird. It just, and that's like, don't ask me how I learned to do that, but just with portraits and stuff, you know, like when you put somebody, paint somebody's eye or their hairline, you can't just have black hairline and then white, and you got to have all those transition little... <coughs> So, let me do that. And, I, and there's no way I'll be able to see this. You know, if I hold out a color checker, I won't see anything. But I can look there and see that there's something going on with some, like, darker colors on the bottom. But you can always check, you know, right in the middle of this whole thing, if I go and just freehand this, which you guys would never do until like a couple of years from now or whatever if you're starting. But I can always, if I'm unsure about an area, even after it's painted, I can go and find out exactly what that is and then put a little spot in there and see if I'm, in, if my values have gotten off or not. I want you to, you can't go slow enough. You can't because, you know, you're going to sit there and you're going to finally get the stupid color after an hour or two. So after two hours, if you get one color, that's, that's plenty of time to get one color, even if you have to call me over three times. And then you get to the sec second color. It doesn't take you an hour and a half. It takes you 45 minutes. Well, even if at the end of the first day, all you do is get one column of colors, that's okay. Right? As long as it's right. Because you will learn by getting it right. You will not learn by getting it wrong. In fact, you will unlearn by getting it wrong. You know what I mean? So go slow, slow, slow. Your first painting, still life, takes you, you know, three weeks back home. Here you're going to be really focusing and getting it done. But, but then your next painting, you know, like if I didn't have you guys talk, if I wasn't sitting here turning around talking. I mean, you get the idea, right? I could probably finish this if I just sat here and didn't have anybody in here and I was like, get this done, oh, I got to go to lunch, da 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 You know, I could get it done in a couple hours. But starting off, it's going to take you, you know, two weeks, three weeks. Okay. Reflective... Uh, objects like the silver cup or a glass is the easiest thing in the world to paint um, using this method it is and the reason is is because it's just a bunch of shape colors that are just you know it's it's not um, you, you have so much room for error you know if I just blotch in these colors but don't let them get all blurred together but just fill them in it's just gonna look good no matter what I do So really make note here as I'm filling in, if you're going to end up doing, painting some glass or a reflective object like this, look at what I've done so far. It's perfect. I'm done it. I'm right on track. But look, see how if you painted that, wouldn't you feel like I'm not doing it right? That just looked dark. Yeah. Right? But all I'm doing is just kind of mindlessly looking over there and like, oh, there's black all in there. There's some black over there. There's a black there. You know, just don't worry about it. Just keep going. It's perfect. Doesn't look anything like silver yet, does it? <laughs>